Good morning everybody and welcome to your Sunday sunrise safari here from Juma Private Game Reserve on the western fringes of the great Kruger National Park. My name is James Henry and I'm on the dash cam and we've got Panda there. I say hello Panda and our guest Mr. Kelvin Watt. Right, we're going to be taking you on a game drive this morning, obviously live and interactive. Please do talk to us during the course of the morning. Our plan is to try and just sort of scout around Juma for any sign of predators largely, hopefully a spotted cat, and with luck we will happen upon some sort of action. As I say, please talk to us, hashtag Wild Earth on the tweet tweet. Alternatively, you can get hold of us on our website or on the YouTube chat or like I said yesterday with a carrier pigeon. We are going to begin here at the Juma Dam, which is very close to where our camp is. And the reason we're going to start here is that there were some buffalo tracks coming down here. Yes, that's what I said. A single lone buffalo bull, which I know is not in and of itself astonishing, but buffalo are a rare commodity here at Juma these days. Well, hello, liver bird. You say you have your coffee and you're ready to go. That's quite a name you have, liver bird. Probably not the one your mother gave you, but uh, your social media handle, perhaps. A very gentle dawn chorus today. Quite a thick covering of cloud, which we're still quite grateful for. And I'd say it's probably sitting at around about 20 five or six degrees already out here and there is one hippopotamus let us give the dawn chorus ten seconds to sing to us Here quite a few crickets going. And then you can hear a black-headed oriole, two of them having a little chat to each other. And then there's a hornbill going. You can hear the oriole going. Otherwise, fairly subdued here for Sunday. All the animals and birds are still asleep. Picasso, you say a pangolin or an art fark would uh, brighten up the day. Yes, quite, it would. You know, when I was a guide guiding guests, uh, the the initiated would arrive and you'd say, well, what do you want to see today? And they'd say, oh, show us a pangolin and an artfark and then look at you as if they were very smart, which, of course, I suppose they were, but uh, one never wanted to be asked that in front of international guests who didn't know what they were. OK, uh, Panda, there's a beautiful woodland kingfisher here. Would you mind having a look at him there? There we go. Very nice. He's just wondering if there isn't perhaps some delicious invertebrate in the grass below that he can apply that dagger-like beak to. Hmm, that's a pretty thing. And if you're interested, the tree he's sitting on is Senegalia burkii, or the black monkey thorn vicious tree. Very angry. Right, we're going to carry on, see what other things we can find as we drive along. And uh, we're going to send you over now to have a look at what the weather is going to be like here at Juma and at Amakala.
Good morning, good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. Wherever you are, warm welcome. You're here live with us here at Amakala Private Game Reserve in the Eastern Cape, South Africa. Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Eric. Your naturalist joined by Morgan behind the camera this morning. We're going to be your eyes and ears. Have a look, have a look. Very misty this morning, but still somewhat warm. It's a decent, decent temperature. I mean, I've got one jersey on and I'm a, a jersey and a pullover and I can really feel I am getting a bit warm. But when we move through the air on, while we start driving, it is going to be a little bit cold. So the, the, the atmosphere is cold, but it's warm at the same time. If that makes a little bit of sense. As soon as we start driving, we will cool down. As soon as we stop, then our body heat will start warming us up again. Off the bat, a lot of bok makiris. More than one couple's calling here. It's, I think, almost three. We've got a couple in front of us, a couple to the left, a couple, and a couple just behind us. Anna Maria, I'm also interested to see what Sunday morning is going to bring us and uh, what we're going to bump into this morning. Be quite interested to see. Uh, I haven't seen much movement around on the roads that we have looked at already, not many tracks on them, but uh, we will cover quite a bit of area and see. What went where and when? Because you can more or less tell when uh, an animal was moving more in the night or moving more towards the early, early hours of the morning. You can see where the dew fell on top. But you can also see, I know this was a busy area yesterday, so there were lots of vehicles up here. So I know that these roads were definitely used or majority of them were. So if we find tracks on top of on top of vehicle tracks, then we know that that was definitely from last night. We're going to move off and start our search party. In the meantime, we're going to send you back up to James, who's doing some birding. We have found a beautiful bird here. It is a European bee eater, and in fact, we found a tree full of them. Unfortunately, they took one look at Panda and decided that they'd abscond and see if they could go somewhere else. I'm not sure what he said or how he managed to offend them, but one stayed. And at one stage, this bird was known as the golden backed bee eater, and you can see why. There's his friend, two friends. Beautiful. And still you can hear the Orioles calling. Liquid, liquid call. And you'll slowly start to see now the birds that migrate, they'll begin to mass. And so you'll see groups of starlings sitting on trees, not starlings, the swallows sitting on trees together, groups of these guys sitting on trees together. And they're not quite going to leave yet, but they're starting to think about it. Certainly the temperature is not going to give them any indication that the autumn is on the way, but the day length is going to do that for them, and that's what will trigger the instinct for them to start to fatten up and then fly off to the north. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries 
showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Okay, I think we should probably move on now, Panda, what do you say? Yep. It is a ma oh dear. Sorry about that. <laughs> it yeah, Blue Waxville, you say you love this time of year for birding. It is great. Let me see if I can find those helmet shrikes. No, they've moved off. Good. You know, I always say that it's, uh, we drive out of camp with a plan and then you get sort of two minutes along the road and the plan changes because you find something interesting that takes you in a different direction. That's exactly what happened. Now, and we're going to carry on off towards the east as opposed to the west, which is where we were going to start. Good morning to everybody watching from Juma Private Game Reserve. My name's Chad. On camera today we got Mpo and we are out and about on the eastern boundary this morning having a look see what fresh tracks we can find. We don't have a specific plan this morning but we just taking it nice and slow driving around seeing if we can find any fresh signs of any cats that might have been out and about last night and then we will decide to follow from there. We did go past the last area or the known area of the Nkuma Pride and I believe they've moved further into Little Gauri so unfortunately no luck there for us but that's all right. We never know what else we can come across. And excuse me, it's it's quite a nice, like overcast, 
Uh, it's a little bit misty here on Juma. Little Safari Girl, I also have a very good feeling about this morning. I woke up this morning positive, good energy. I know there's going to be something, I know there is something good out there. It's just a matter of when we find it for everybody. And we, we got no set expectations this morning. We're just going to be enjoying our time out in the bush. Whatever we come across is amazing. Waiting for that beauty of a sighting that's out there for us. And it's, uh, it is about time that if <laughs> Darkman lover, thanks much for that uh, comment. Myself and Paul are excited. What's that in the road? Oh, it looks like there might be a rhino up ahead of us. I just saw some ears flicking. I'll try get a little bit closer and then stop. You see they're just on the left. Well, there's a nice pleasant surprise for us. I'll just stop close to this tree and see if we can get a view. Oh, and uh, sorry, I'm gonna just try to stop here. If you give me two seconds, sorry, there's a hyena also. So there, we have stopped now, there's a hyena of tar right inside. <laughs> Thanks very much leopard lover, I do hope so too. And it's off to a great start this morning, so there's uh, the hyena that you can see now, off to the right hand side of the vehicle that seems like it's just resting in the road there, maybe it's had quite a long evening moving out and about, looking for any food. Also maybe looking for a leopard because it knows that if it does find a leopard, the potential of food is very, very high. It can steal carcasses from leopard. If there's a leopard in the tree with a carcass, often it will wait for that leopard to drop the carcass. And see, it's just grooming itself. There's quite a lot of moisture in the air this morning. I was saying to Paul earlier, it's, it's very, very humid. It's almost like the, the air is trapped in by the clouds. But I think once the clouds do burn off, it's going to be an extremely hot day today. But how beautiful is that? Lots of hyena luck in the last couple of days. I love the hyena's ears. Just looking at this hyena, it looks like it's, it was listening to something, but now it's uh, put down his head. Okay, we're going to just pan out from this hyena, and we'll move towards what else is uh, here on the road for us. The beautiful woodlands kingfisher calling there in the background. And there you can just see A nice uh, big rock on the side of the road. Not a bad roadblock to have, well, two roadblocks to have. A spotted hyena and a beautiful big white rhino. <clears throat> and 
not a hundred percent sure if it is a female or a male but most likely a male you you don't often find female white rhinos alone they'll often either be with uh, their calf or in a crash together so i mean a, a crash could be made up of two or three four five rhinos uh, the biggest crash that i've ever seen was a, a crash of 15 white rhinos all together and then one black rhino was actually mingling in and amongst the white rhinos it was a pretty incredible sighting and the, the truck i was working with at the time we we stopped he's pointed and far in the distance in quite a big open grassland and he said looks like there's some buffalo so i stopped lifted the binoculars looked and i was like oh so that's amazing like lots and lots of rhinos all together and then he lifted up his binoculars while i was chatting to the guests he said lift your binoculars again have a look at that one there on the left hand side and so i lifted up the binoculars again and there was one bull black rhino intermingling intermingling with the white rhinos it was uh amazing sighting and very very special to see so many white rhinos together and it's not too often that you will get to see that many roaming rhino 100 percent what a brilliant start to the morning it's uh, gonna be a fantastic morning out here in the Sabi Sands at Juma. Always amazes me at these white rhinos or just rhinos. I mean, have a look how those ears are moving in different directions at different times, always aware of what is happening around. I mean, even if their eyes are going to be closed. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
So I don't think when we, we do move on that we'll head towards where this rhino is just because we'll most likely disturb it. But I'll try maybe in a little bit just reposition. Maybe we are able to get a, another view of him. And apparently this hyena that we with at the moment is a unrecognized hyena from the Juma clan. But maybe at some point somebody will be able to tell us who exactly it is. That rhino seems very, very cozy where he is right now. And I don't think he's going to get up anytime soon. Most likely going to make, take full advantage of this cooler morning just to rest before it starts to feed. Right, we have come to the waterhole here on the northeast corner of Juma, known as Buffel's Hook or the Buffalo Corner. There are no buffalo here, but there are a lot of hippo, and possibly even more interestingly, there is a great rising of fish. And every so often, the surface of this water ripples with their activity and I think there must be tilapia. And certainly, you know, the water is contracting slightly. There you can see a few of those ripples. And so perhaps there's just a bit less space for them to be in. And they're tiny little tilapia. They're probably about, I don't know, um, call it three or four inches long. 12 centimeters or so. And I remember seeing them for the first time in the drought of 2015-16 when the Egyptian geese decided to forsake veganism and they began to eat these uh, tilapia, which they're not supposed to do. They're supposed to be to totally vegan like panda. Uh, Rachel Barry, good morning. You say you're sorry you're late. Um, talking to us all the way from New Zealand. Thank you for talking to us from New Zealand. It's lovely to have you with us. I guess you've been, uh, I don't know what you've been doing. What time is it there? It's probably just after lunch. Maybe you had a big Sunday, lu Sunday lunch. In case you're wondering, everyone, that's my very poor Kiwi accent that I was giving you there. Very peaceful here. I was hoping for some sort of exotic bird or maybe a leopard lying on the damn wall. But we'll take tilapia and hippopotami. Okay, Dussie, you say that you would like to see lions, cheetah, and leopard today. Well, you don't have a, a huge wish list at all, do you? No, lions, cheetah, and leopard. All right, Dussie. Panda, would you like to find some lions, cheetah, and leopard for Dussie today? I would love to. They're now overexposed on the dash cam. I'll have to sort that out. <laughs> oh, thank you, Darcy Miller. You say you're so happy the dash cam is back. Yes. Well, we're happy to have it back. It is a, it's a temporary fix, this one, but we'll organize a proper one at some stage. Now, did you see those fish rising there? That was because the three-banded plover flew over the top of them. It's not a bird that eats tilapia, but they're probably not very good at ornithology, the tilapia. 
and there's also a grey heron just coming into view now, the other side there. That grey heron will be very excited at the prospect of devouring tilapia. Oof. And I've just watched a green-backed heron fly off, or striated heron. There's lots happening here. Lots happening at Buffalo Corner Dam. Catch us a fish, Mr. Grey Heron. Your Sunday morning kippers for breakfast. Yes, cheeky baby Ellie, you say you're loving all the sounds. Always good to have some decent sound. And it, certainly I think a lot of people actually, when they watch those waterhole cameras, uh, they just have the sounds on in the background. Because people do find it very peaceful to listen to the of hippo. It's also quite restful to listen to the crested franklin when it's calling, but only if it's calling quite far away, like that one was. When it's calling right next to you, it's a little bit like being hit over the head with a pan. Not that I've been hit over the head with a pan, but that's what I imagine it feels like. Hello Liam, we were wondering what kind of fish we get here. Uh, sharks, um, Dorado, no I'm being, I'm being facetious Liam. We get two kinds, well <clears throat> we get two groups of fish. We get two, the catfish and the tilapia, but I think there are probably quite a few species of both here, or two or three species of both. Um, but I'm afraid further than that I can't help you. Down in the Sand River, which is a flowing river, and probably the Sabi River as well, further south of that, you'll definitely get tigerfish every so often. Uh, they've been caught around there. Um, and maybe, maybe yellowfish, um, but you know, the odd carp maybe. But here in the static waters, you'll only get tilapia and catfish. And the great question, Liam, is always, well, how on earth did they get here? Because we know that this dam dried up completely for many, many months. And if a, if a water hole dries up just briefly, then sometimes the, or quite frequently, the, the catfish will be able to form a mucous membrane around themselves and actually survive in the mud. And they go into a torpor where they hardly burn any energy and they just sort of exist in a almost transient state. And then when the water comes back, they come back out. But the tilapia don't do the same thing. And in fact, for a long time, there were definitely no tilapia in here. And now they're back. And we think that they probably travel, and they must travel here, um, on birds' legs or in vegetation brought by birds, uh, or possibly in the digestive systems. The bird eats, eats fish and then poops out into the water here, and in so doing starts a new population. Right, the panda, shall we move along? Yep. Very good. We'll pop back over now to Chad and his sleepy rhino. And we'll see what else we can find around this part of the world. <clears throat> Thanks very much, uh, James, and indeed, this is definitely a sleepy rhino. 
we have just repositioned a little bit um, but uh, I couldn't loop around to get a much better view but this is perfect I mean this runner I don't want to disturb him while he is taking a morning nap you never know how active this rhino might have been last night with that storm three days ago lots of rain washed away his scent and been a territorial bull I mean I had quite a good look now and it does look like it is a male just by looking at the sheer size of him so he'll be most likely a territorial male um, from this area and probably having scent marked yesterday having quite a, a long afternoon I'm sure he's just been resting up here maybe after he drank at a water hole probably nearby he found himself this nice little spot just to rest and I mean if it was extremely hot this morning no, probably would have been up already. Janlin, welcome to you. Thank you very much for for tuning in, and I'm glad you found Wild Earth. It's a fantastic show, and if you do have any questions or more comments, please do send them through. We'd love to get to know you a little bit more and answer any questions you might have for us. And I hope you will enjoy the show and hopefully one day you will be able to come to South Africa and experience this all for yourself in person. It is quite nice also just to to sit with this rhino. I mean the vehicle has been off now for 10 or 15 minutes and we've been listening out for any alarm calls we haven't heard too much, but this rhino also doesn't seem like he is going to go anywhere. I was going to drive up this road and then take the next road, but I'm not going to disturb this rhino. I'll rather let him just rest and enjoy this cooler morning. We'll probably turn around and then take the road just behind us. And he does seem like he is very, very content at the moment, relaxing there. <laughs> Autumn, uh, he might be collecting road taxes and that's why I don't want to go past him. Because then I will have to pay, so I will rather veer off the highway and I'll go a different route. Hopefully we do find another roadblock, maybe of some cat. Hopefully they're not collecting any taxes. But maybe if we can just zoom in a, a little bit and pour to the horn. We'll try to zoom in. I was just having a look through my binoculars and you can actually see quite a lot of, I mean it looks like he might have been fighting or he could have even been rubbing up against uh, a tree. Sometimes they will try and sharpen their horns um, on trees. I know he has been dehorned but I mean you can see that it's, it almost looks like it's been through a bit of the wars. Lots of little scratches and looks taken out of that horn and I mean being a, a territorial bull he'll definitely have to fight off some males within this area that might be trying to take whereas that would be pretty amazing to see a uh, hyena snuggling up with this rhino but I think they they might not even know one another are here because that hyena that we are with was a little bit further down the road from where we were and where we were looking at the rhino. So, I mean, I'll keep an eye out 
that uh, maybe this hyena does come towards this rhino but I don't know if the rhino is going to be happy with the hyena snuggling up I think the hyena would be happy to snuggle up but I don't think this rhino would be happy because at any point that hyena could turn against this rhino and try and take him for breakfast maybe what happens if he had to call all his friends or his clan members and they could then attack him? I wouldn't want that. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. AfriCam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. <laughs> Eric saying that it was too embarrassing there to get stuck. He doesn't want to ask for help. Yeah, I, look, Eric, when you're as good at getting stuck as I am, uh, you, you get over that embarrassment fairly quickly because people just get used to it. I remember at, when I was a guide at Angala as a youngster, I was really awful at getting stuck. I always drove into areas that everyone else seemed to understand that you'd get stuck in, and I just couldn't. And regularly, I'd have to be towed out by my long-suffering colleagues. And I stopped being embarrassed about it after a while. It's good that you're uh, able to admit it there, I suppose. <clears throat> Hello, K6, you say, Jumbo, Jumbo, cool to be riding along with you all. Jumbo, A6, Habari, I hope everything is Mzuri Sana, wherever you are. I'm assuming you must be in somewhere in East Africa, or perhaps you've just been to East Africa. wonderful part of the world. Jumbo, for those of you who don't know, is the Swahili greeting. 
ジャンボトゥーリスト、フォローカースリーバイ、ハクーナ・マタダ。ウチャー・トライ・アヴォイド。ウィフ・カム・ダウン・アロード・コール・ハイナ・ロード、ウィチーズ・リトル・ドゥヴァン。ウィフ・オニー・カム・ダウン・ヘア・ビコーズ・アイ・ハヴァン・ファン・トラックス・オブ・アフィメル・レポッド・オン・ディ・エニ・レポッド・イエスタデイ。Um, and I was hoping that maybe Tlalamba, Queen of Juma, was hanging around here with a, a kill sitting in a tree with her lazily washing her face next to it on an exposed marula branch. But as yet, that has not happened. Yes. Catherine, you say you wish we could see black rhino at Juma. I don't know when the last time a black rhino was seen at Juma. But、uh, you can see them at Amakala. Black rhino have been reintroduced there. So they are there. They are always going to be fewer and further between than the white rhinos. All these little seasonal pans have now dried up, and that means that the water holes are going to become much more interesting focal points as we go into the winter. Where we'll reassess our route when we come to the end of this. Oh, you know what is quite interesting? Maybe there's a closer one. No, let's go back here. Let's just quickly, if you don't mind, Jarrett, I'm just going to have a quick look at something here. Unless Chad has managed to find himself something utterly astonishing. <laughs> so. I mean, you'll hear a lot of guides tell you that this is called a gall, which it is. It's called a gall, but that's generally as far as the information goes. And a gall, I read up recently, is formed either by an invertebrate or caused by an invertebrate that has stung or bitten the tree, or it's a fungus, or it's some other kind of disease. It can be a virus, even. That causes this undifferentiated cell, cell growth. And I mean, in, in many respects, it's like a cancer. It's like a tumor that forms on the tree and creates these sort of strange, I suppose, odd, oddities of growth through, probably through the modification of the DNA. It must be through the modification of the DNA. And there, there's actually surprisingly little known about them. But on these Combrataceae, which is a, this is a, a silver cluster leaf. Which is a member of the Combrataceae family,、uh, same as the bush willows. These galls form quite frequently, and they're not entirely sure why. It's not insects in this case, but it's some other kind of、um, agent that causes them. It doesn't harm the tree,、um, but for this little patch of tree. And that's all I have to say about galls. And now we will hand you over to Chad, who has found. The other pachyderm we get. Yeah, so we left the rhino and hyena and we took the, the other road so we didn't have to pay those taxes. And look what we've found a small little herd of elephants. That s e e m to be also taking, making the most of this cooler morning here on Juma. The, the mother did look like she crossed the road just before you came to us. And now the, the calf has also just crossed the road. But I'm not 100% sure how many elephants there are here. 
and we're just sitting watching and enjoying it's amazing over the last uh, couple of days that I've been here you can go two days without seeing any elephants and then elephants are everywhere and then you don't see them and then you see them and quite incredible how they can move quite quickly and they seen when they want to be seen sometimes you see them sometimes you don't I'm gonna just drive a little bit closer see if we can maybe get a get another view of these elephants it's not too thick in this area but I'll just stay on the road let's see if the elephants are gonna play ball with us this morning oh there's another one in the road you can see quite a, a young elephant I mean you can see those tusks have just started to come out and as we were driving towards it it just shook its head a little bit and it's almost like a showing off sometimes you'll find that younger elephants like this often have a little bit of an attitude they often do whatever they like and try and put their ears out trumpet at you and sometimes mom will just come towards it and communicate with it to come closer Darcy Miller it's it's always lovely to see elephants uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again I could spend a whole afternoon or a whole morning just with a, a herd of elephants you know the the nice thing about elephants is that they're continuously doing something I mean within a herd there's some that might be playing around with one another some are feeding some are sleeping some are throwing dust on themselves some of the youngsters are playing around with one another there's always something going on with a, a herd of elephants whereas a lot of the
I mean, just having a look at this elephant now, you, you can see those tusks. And they, they say that elephant's tusks will start to grow, or you'll start to see them at around about a year old, maybe just over a year. And so, I mean, looking at this elephant, probably somewhere around four years old, four or five years old. I mean, those tusks are, they're not massive, but they, they've definitely been growing for some time. And then now, just because we got into this area where we are now, they're going to go right towards where we were on the road. And such magnificent creatures just to spend time with, just to listen to them feeding and moving through the thicker bush. Yeah. Paul, I'm just going to try and do turn around here in this open area. If you just bear with me once again, I'm just going to try and turn us around. Let's see. Be good. Uh, if it is your dream job, you should go ahead and follow your dreams. It's, uh, your dreams can become a reality. I promise you that. All you've got to do is sign up for any uh, course. You can do quite a lot of research on what course would suit you best. There's lots of training providers out there. You could even do the Fogaza course at home. So if you go onto the Fugaza website, you'll be able to um, get the, all the books and workbooks and manuals sent to you, wherever you may be in the world. And you can study at home and you can actually qualify, qualify as a guide from home. And then after that, once you've done that, you'll need to get a PDP, which is a professional driving permit, just to be able to drive guests. You'll need a, a first aid qualification and then you're A for away. Then you can start living out your dream. And I mean also if you, you are wanting to do a longer course you can you can go to a training provider that does a three month course, a six month course, a year course, two year course just depending, I mean, personally speaking myself, I went to a, a nature training provider called Bejan Nature Training, uh, which is in northern KwaZulu-Natal, and I did a two-year course. Um, I did the marine and terrestrial, so I'm a qualified marine guide as well as a terrestrial guide. I did lots of walking trails. I did first aid courses, level one, two, and three. Um, did trekking with a amazing human being called Colin Patrick. I did a, a tracks and science course as well as a trailing course. So I mean those two will differ. The tracks and science courses identify in a track. So they circle say 10 tracks and you have to walk up and say okay this is a leopard, that's a starling track, this is a lion and then a, tra a trailing course is actually following the animal. So You'll find, say, for instance, rhino tracks, and then you'll start. You'll get off the vehicle, and you'll be walking in front, and the assessor will be behind you. And then he assesses how you follow that track. So your decision-making and where you want to go, why you want to go that way. And so I was also able to then get a tracking qualification. But uh, talking about trailing and following animals, let's head over to Eric Namakala and see what he is tracking. Pit. 
tested that our patience as well. He's lying on himself at the very crest of a hill, or this little, yeah, this little hillside. And uh, they're at a, play, <laughs> at a place where not very easy, easily seen. Um, there's a road going down here, there's a road going there, and there's another road going here, and there's another road coming up on top. And they are right in the middle. There's a fair, a fair amount of thicket. So that is also making it a, just an extra, extra bit difficult to try and try and find them. Oh, we've got a bit of a traffic jam here. Traffic in the bush, traffic in the bush. Everyone on the morning safari. And we're all just trying to see where we're going to be able to get uh, a little bit of visibility on our felines. They're making it very difficult for us. But that's what it's like being out here in the wild. Animals don't always make it very easy for you. Definitely not. But um, I'm sure it's a lovely, cool day. Uh, I mean, not, not too upset with them. I, I do believe they are. I suspect they're going to keep going. Uh, somebody did see them moving. Uh, from one place that's where they were first seen um, and because it's lovely and cool there is still that option that they may still keep going we we'll cross fingers cross our toes nostrils and eyes but that happens and uh, they get lucky in the meantime we're just gonna enjoy being out here listening to the birds the other animals the smells it smells very fresh Keegan, no, he, well, I actually don't know. There is signs of him coming this side. So there are tracks that were seen of him coming uh, uh, back this side, but I haven't seen what the group looks like. Uh, I didn't, man we didn't manage to get viz on them. Um, so we're not actually too sure if he is with them or not. I really, uh, I hope that he is, because this is, now, week almost four of him being away from the Pride. It may be even longer, um, but to my knowledge, maybe week three. Could be week three or could be week four, I'm not too sure. But it was quite a while ago that he was reported last seen with the herd, not without the herd, the Pride. The Pride of Lions. We had lots of dew fall last night, and uh, when the dew falls, it gives this freshness to the atmosphere. The grasses are smelling. It really is nice. Oh, Darcy Miller, indeed. I must agree with you there. The views on Amakala are unbelievable. And you can get views almost anywhere in the reserve. That's why it makes it so special, is that there's not just one viewpoint, there's like millions of them. <laughs> They're all over the place. And, uh, you know, it, it, it really does provide. And uh, it makes it quite nice for the guides when they're doing their, their coffee stops or their sundowner stops. You know, there's multiple places where they can stop, not just one place. And uh, they generally are very nice spots that you can see. Well, I wonder now. I'm not seeing anybody sitting in that elevated spot where I thought they were getting viz from. I don't see anybody there now, so I wonder where they've moved to. But I'm sure we'll soon find out. We'll keep bumbling around in this area until something happens. I'm sure. They must come down. There's a whole herd of zebra for them here. These zebras got the memo, they're moving out. They won't stick, they won't be here for too long. <laughs> I can see them there in the very distance and they're going over that hill. And rightfully so. <laughs> be in your best interest to do so. Hmm. 
very interesting. Isn't it? And oh my goodness, that Three Amigos was an amazing sighting. Absolutely amazing. I think that was the best one to this day. them active but I don't think we've had that you know so close and uh, everything shaped out perfectly well for us That was cool. Welcome back to those of you who just rejoined us. We're sitting with a pair of Wahlberg's eagles here. And Mrs. Wahlberg is singing now to her husband, Mr. Wahlberg. Now, if you do enjoy our shows, and please do consider becoming an explorer or a subscriber. You can do that by going to wildearth.tv and following the instructions there. Alternatively, as some of you will know, uh, this is not a cheap thing to broadcast on a daily basis. High definition from the wilderness. So if you'd like to help us in our mission to connect people with nature, you can do that by going to wildearth.tv forward slash donate. Uh, any contribution is and useful. Thank you. Seems like it's eating something. Oh. Nice, Panda. Panda reckons Mrs. Wahlberg is eating breakfast. Welcome back to those of you who've just rejoined. We're sitting with our pair of Wahlberg's eagles here in the southern reaches of Juma. And Panda, oh yes, has discovered 
The, the Wahlberg's eagle is devouring something. Mrs. Wahlberg is having breakfast. Mr. Wahlberg is sitting some way to the right-hand side in a tree without anything to eat. Don't worry about him, Panda. You can carry on with her. Almost impossible to tell what she's got there. They eat a lot of reptiles and small mammals. <laughs> Anna Marie, you say you'd love to see baby Wahlbergs. Yeah, the time by the time you do see a baby Wahlberg, um, it's normally the same size as the adults. <laughs> it's just got slightly different plumage. Mmm. Mm. How delicious. Right, well, that's a pretty good predator we found, but Eric has topped us with some furry predators down at Amakala. Yo, we... Persistence has paid off here. Incredibly... Incredibly happy indeed. And these are the subadults. Yo, they are big, yo. They are very big. Um, they're much smaller than mom. Oh, she's walking right towards us. Definitely not much smaller than mom. Um, they're all starting to fill out quite nicely. Even mom's coming to say hello. There's one sitting. Oh, she's cross. She's going to. Oh, she, I think she was hoping mom was going to come a little bit closer so she could stalk her. Still a little bit playful. Still very playful. Hello. Good morning. Got beautiful eyes here. How cool is this? These cubs are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Look at this. She's stalking her aunt. Oh, she gave it up. She gave it up. What are you looking at us like that for? There's no food here. No. You may not. Don't even think about it. I see you there. I see both of you. These are my tires. You may not have them. Hello, big lady. What do you want now? <laughs> Everybody is interested here. There's nothing for you to munch. You've got to catch it yourself. I'm sorry. But we'll watch you do it. Oh, look at that lady on the right-hand side. She is just big. Okay. You may see the back seat. This is fairly a funny angle. There's also going to be some cars passing us. Um, but, uh, Liverbird, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we've, we've tried and driven and driven and driven and driven. We've done our miles. See how they're starting to blend into the grass there? Absolutely amazing. And some of them are a little bit darker than others, but that's just how the genes are and uh, how how the genes are distributed and some will be darker. And I see mom is definitely darker than the rest of them and you'll see her, she's second from the front there. Autumn, you nervous. <laughs> she was very close. Nah, so they were just a little bit curious. Um, I don't know what, I don't know if they were picking up any smells of anything that, uh, uh, they were quite, quite curious. 
with what was going on with our camera kit at the back there. I think they were staring at our aerials, wondering how many tails do you have? The question, the answer is eight. We have eight, ta eight tails, because they are eight aerials. They do look like little, little springy tails. Wow, wow, we. I always say it, persistence pays off. If you are patient enough, anything is possible. You just gotta get, put your, your mind to it and say that there's no other way, we're not leaving until we find them. And I, we weren't leaving until we find them. Right, we're gonna send you up to Chad for a check-in. Well done, Eric. Amazing that you got to find some lions. Very, very well done. Nice that they were walking also towards your car. So we are now coming up towards uh, Treehouse Dam. Uh, we just came to see what's happening around. So we'll just stop here and take in the, the scenery for a little bit. See if we can find anything of interest around here. I know Dewey was uh, around at Treehouse Dam yesterday, but it doesn't seem like Dewey is here at Treehouse Dam. It doesn't seem like there is too much happening around this waterhole, to be honest with everybody. Just having a, a quick scan with my binoculars, seeing if I can see anything maybe hiding in the bushes around this waterhole. There were some fresh elephant tracks not too far from the water. So maybe those elephants came for an early morning drink and they've already moved off. Also just scanning the trees around because you never know where the queen lies. And I'm really, we, we definitely have been very lucky with uh, a lot of elephant sightings that we have been having and also nice to see quite a lot of baby elephants or elephant calves that have been moving on Juma over the last couple of days. Always nice to see elephants, especially calves. But I'm poor, I think let's uh, continue. We're gonna continue driving everybody. Let's uh, see if we, we are able to find anything else. But for now, I'm gonna send you over to James, who's on a birding mission. Well, here we've got yet another bird, and it's an interesting bird because A, it's obscured by the tree, and so it's slightly difficult to um, to identify, but also it's interesting because it's a youngster of a fairly common raptor that we see around here. I, I, I will allow you maybe three minutes to guess what it is. Anybody would like to hazard a guess at what we're looking at here? A lot of birdsong around. And some squirrels. There's some squirrels shouting very loudly, and I don't know if they're shouting at this bird. You know what, I'm actually going to go and look in there because I'm not sure, convinced they are shouting at this bird. I'll tell you what it is. It's a juvenile brown snake. Eater. There's some squirrels shouting just in here. They may well just be shouting at the, at the raptor. But maybe, just maybe, they've watched a cat come through here.
wouldn't it be nice if we found a spotted kitty in this little grove of Tambuti trees? Let's see if I can ease us in here. I did see a squirrel. There's the squirrel. You see the squirrel, Limpo? It's just in here. No. No, Des. There's the squirrel going into its hole. Squirrel alarm calls are actually seldom fruitful. And now they are dead silent. Lovely calls of crested barbets though. Anyway, I think let's carry on. They're probably, quite possibly shouting at that, um, at that brown snake eagle. The brown snake eagle is not a normal devourer of mammals, although they will take mammals from time to time. This is actually quite helpful when I'm reversing. I can see what I'm going to hit. <laughs> it's like having a rear view mirror. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, we'll pop out onto the road and carry on. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. Look at this big boy. Yeah. 
he's just like his dad. But I think he's definitely more curious than his dad. Um, from about eight months old, he's been very interested in cars. And uh, quite funnily, he, he actually started getting this dark part of his mane. I don't see it now. I wasn't really looking for it now, now, but I didn't see... It may still have it. That dark part of the mane is something that he's only really supposed to get when he turns about five, four, five years old. He's, they, he's not even a, he's probably about a year and a half now. And uh, there was a stage where we, he definitely wasn't dirty because it had rained. Um, so I'm not too sure if that was that testosterone coming in, that big dark man, and his dad, well, his dad is one of those big, dark, main boys um, who's still yet to get that very, very dark man in. Absolutely amazing. Oh, so, the treehouse dam, and we drove the southern boundary. So now we are in the part in the western part of Juma. We we haven't driven this morning, and I don't think James has driven around here. So we'll now drive along this road and see if we can find any interesting tracks that we might be able to follow. Seems like there's been lots of zebras that have been walking up and down in this area, but no cat tracks just yet. Would be quite nice to also catch up with the Telemati Breakaway Pride. They were on Juma for two or three days and I'm not a hundred percent sure now exactly where they have gone, but I'm sure they're doing all right. It's always exciting for me to drive or to adventure around Juma because every time I come across the, the area where I've had a sighting, it just brings back all those memories of the sighting. Like this road a little bit further along is where I found the wild dogs yesterday morning, I think it was. That was an incredible sighting to follow those wild dogs down the road and as those two were following the Impala down the road. I wouldn't have really liked to be that Impala. Just having a look at all these uh, beautiful trees here on Juma, the beautiful jackalberry trees, marula trees, some leadwoods, some torchwood trees also. Just really hoping that I'm going to see that rosetted cat lying in one of them. And uh, I believe Eric thinks that he might have driven over something earlier this morning with those lions coming to investigate. And it's, it's always amazing if you, you're on drive with guests and the lions do come towards the vehicle. And some people for the first time, oh, a little steenbok that was in the road that drove off. So, like, I mean, a lot of the time the, they'll come and investigate the small, and sometimes people start to panic a little bit. Why are these lions coming closer? What are they doing? Why are they coming to sniff me out? But they're just curious. I mean, even if you're following a leopard down the road and it comes across wild dog dung or leopard lion dung, They'll often just go and investigate, just to make sure who was moving through their territory, why they're moving through their territory, when they were there, just to get an idea of what's happening. It's an amazing experience to have them come in that close to the vehicle. But never go and park that close to an animal. But, I mean, they've become quite habituated to us and viewing them over many, many years. 
DJ Lings, thanks very much. I appreciate that a lot. You're sending me a lot of uh, rosette luck. I'm feeling very, very lucky at this point. Everybody is backing me. That's uh, myself or James, no matter who does. Oh, some dwarf mongoose just running across the road. It's, it's very tough to be able to get the dwarf mongoose on camera unless you see them from a distance. Then it's a lot easier. But if you come around the corner, it's very tough for Mpo to get that camera on them before they do run off. Okay, while I'm on the move, heading into the western parts of Juma, why don't we go check in with James and see what he's up to. Well, that's very kind, Chad, to say that you don't mind who finds a leopard, me or you. Uh, I mind. I mind a lot, Chad. I definitely want to find a leopard. Um, I, I mean, for you personally, yes, I'd like you to find one. At the expense of my finding one? Mm, no, no, I'm afraid not, because I have to leave today, and so, you know, I'd really like to see a leopard myself. That's not a leopard you're looking at there. That is a red-billed hornbill. And it's differentiated from a leopard by the fact that it has this, this very red bill, which a leopard definitely doesn't have, unless it's been punched in the nose. Now, we too are around Treehouse Dam, where Dewey, the stick-chewing hippopotamus, was yesterday, but I don't see him here today. He seems to have moved on. I'm not sure if Chad had him here earlier. Just go, can you see the roller there? Mm. You see the roller there, Panda? Up on the right-hand side of that monkey thorn. That is a lilac breasted, is it? It's not a European. It's a lilac. Is it lilac? Did you see it's lilac? Yes, it's a lilac. You haven't seen a European this year. I, well, I haven't. I don't think anyone else has seen one. I haven't, cool. Did you see one? Not here in Juma. Not here at Juma. Where did you see one? Kruger. In Kruger? Mm -hmm. When was that? At the beginning of this year. Okay. Panda Swan and Kruger at the beginning of this year. Well done, Panda. Panda Tagudzwa Musesani. Billions Glitz. <laughs> right, we're going to carry on as I remind you that uh, you should be talking to us using the hashtag Wild Earth on the tweet tweet on the YouTube chat stream, or indeed on our website feed. Let me ask young Chad where he's going. Uh, Chad Hobson, come in. Let's see what he says. What is your position and route? Uh, James, I'm heading north on Lenites now. I'm from Monkey Orange. Okay, copy that. <laughs> I was just saying to Panda, he does get around, does Chad, and he sure does. We'll, we'll take a different route from the one he's taken. Eric, while the two of us flail around here, Juma has managed to be much more successful in the Eastern Cape. All right, so we managed to relocate them. 
Well, they came to us. They relocated us, I should say. There was a bit of excitement. Wait, how many? One, two, three, four, five. OK, there was a bit of excitement where so apparently they were chasing after something. But uh, all six of them are here, and uh, they are still on the move. It's been a, it's been an, a, a great sighting so far. I don't know how much of them we are going to have now. They are going into this rather large block, which is very thick. Sivi, oh my goodness, these gorgeous, gorgeous kitties. They really are. And um, no, like I said, they're going into this very large block of thicket where there's plenty of game species in there. Plenty. Okay, they're all froze. The fro. This position could mean that there may be an animal that has been seen ahead, and the first one has stopped. Okay. Okay, look at those walk. You see how they pick up their feet properly now and place it directly where their first paw was to not create too much sound. Oh, okay. We're going into stalking mode. I will tell you these sub adults love hunting. It's their new favorite thing to do. Liam, you're looking at one of the two. And the second one is his father. So there's only two. Now they've got to exercise their patience. They've got to be very patient when hunting. Okay, there's a bit of movement. Everybody's moving now. Um, they say they're chasing, they've gone after a warthog. But the fact that these two ladies are still here, so there is another one, you can't actually see her. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, there he goes. Look, 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 look. okay. Yo, oh, that warthog was too fast. He dropped a gear. He was in fifth gear. He dropped it to third. Goodness gracious, running for his life. But how cool was that? It happens like that, um, you know, sometimes where you know, they'll be so close, so, so close to getting there, but they just can't. Um, I've noticed that the cubs, you know, the cubs sometimes go a little bit too early um, and can sometimes not ruin the hunt, but uh, they sort of chasing the animal prematurely. And uh, that definitely will get the animal to run. You need to be within strikeable distance. And I think strikeable distance is between that five to 10 meter mark. If you're not in that five to 10 meter mark, you're too far away personally. Um, if you were a cheetah, it'd be a different story because you can get to, you can go from zero to 80 in six seconds, sorry, not six seconds, four seconds, um, you know, whereas lions go from about zero to zero to 80 in probably about six, seven seconds. So it's just a little bit longer. And in that time, that warthog is gone. But that was pretty cool. You see how she's sitting down now. She's uh, 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 lying. So you're going to see a car going past quick. <laughs> All right. This is On Safari, 
Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. This is also an area where they are, the warthogs are all over the place, yeah? So there shouldn't be any shortage of prey to find. Like they were stalking two different warthogs there. Two went off that way, and uh, other two went off <laughs> in the opposite direction when they saw mom pursuing after one of them. I can't get up there. They did miss out on their bacon, Sibi. They did, but I'm sure they'll be able to find some more. I'm sure you can find some more porkies to get after. Oh, look at them all walking in, in a line. Okay, now I'm being bothered by the flies. I maybe shouldn't have been laughing at Morgan. Mm -hmm. Karma's coming back. <laughs> I would apologize again for the vehicles there. We are all parked here in close proximity. The others are moving off. We are still sitting here. Yo, Elizabeth Morgan has done. <laughs> he has been working nonstop, especially when they come close to the car. It's a little bit awkward. It's not the right angle, um, but uh, we... You definitely do want to see their faces when they get close to the car like that. Because I love looking at their eyes. They really have beautiful eyes. Um, and the kind of the curios the curiosity that they had. Uh, I definitely think it's because a lot of the time antelope uh, leave their, their droppings on the road. And we drive through them and that smells like the antelope. So I think that's probably why they uh, think that... Uh, there's something in the car. All right, we're going to continue going up this road, see if we can't find them again. In the meantime, we're going to send you over to Chad. Thanks very much, Eric. And I think your water ran off so far. 
but it's actually now popped out here at Juma. We've got a beautiful small little family group of warthogs here. Nice little open clearing on Juma. And it's not too often that you will get to frame up on warthogs. They often do run off quite quickly, but we've parked quite a distance away from these warthogs. So they're very, very relaxed with us. It looks like there's four youngsters. You can just see them moving there in the grass. And you'll often find the male and female warthogs will, will be with the the youngsters. I mean, these piglets would have been born last year, somewhere around November, December. Excuse me, they've got a similar uh, birthing pattern to wildebeest and impalas. So I mean, they'll all give birth generally mid-November to early December, mid-November, uh, December. And even the other day, with I was on drive with Steve, and we saw a baby in parlor not too far from where we are now. And so there, there might be still some late, late uh, in parlors that are still dropping, but most of them would have been born already. Looks like that one warthog actually might be on its knees, feeding, and if you. You know, warthogs, they've got a very, very short neck. So it might be quite tough for them to bend down and to eat the grass or whatever they, they might be feeding on there. They might be looking for any roots or bulbs. And they've got a very hard nose, these warthogs, and they'll often use that to dig up the soil to try and get to nice fresh roots or little bulbs that might be in the ground. It's quite funny to see how these warthogs do move around on their front knees. The The sun is starting to shine here quite brightly on Juma and it is starting to heap quite a lot. There is still some cloud cover in the sky but the, the sun at the moment is shining brightly it's doing its its job so i think today is going to be a scorcher here on juma and a lot of the cats may start to rest um kelly so i'm not a hundred percent sure what uh, percentage do you make it to adulthood but warthog so i mean the the female can give birth to sometimes six little piglets but she only has four mammary glands that those piglets can suckle from so it is a little bit sad but often um, two will pass away quite recently after birth just because they aren't getting the necessary nutrients that they do need from the milk because the others are hogging those mammary glands but then I mean they are very very vulnerable at such a young age I mean being so so small Something like a, a raptor, like a martial eagle, might even come down and swoop up a baby warthog. Leopards, lions, cheetahs, things like that will also go for them. So I would say it's probably about 50%. Uh, don't, don't quote me on this, but that's what I would say. Somewhere around about 50% of them will survive, maybe even less. In the, often if you do see very, very young warthogs, they come out of the den probably, I'd say like 10, 10 days or two, two weeks after birth. And they're so vulnerable, like they're so um, light on their feet and they still get quite tired quite quickly. So what sometimes happens is like they'll run with mom and as soon as mom stops, what they'll do is they'll just lie down on the ground to rest. So you can imagine that's a very vulnerable time for these warthogs in their lives. But now the, these ones, they're a couple months old already, so I'm sure they've got a better chance of survival. Obviously, they are still very vulnerable to leopards and lions, 
as we know now i mean you saw in amakala the lions chase the warthog yesterday we know that the Nkuhuma pride killed a warthog we we just heard it so they are vulnerable to the predators our march to freedom is irreversible I've just stopped now and in the road you can see there's a hornbill. So it's a red-billed hornbill. You can see there's some nice fresh elephant dung. And this hornbill, let's see what it's gonna eat. So there might be lots of insects that might be in and around this elephant dung. Might be feeding on maybe some of the fruits that these elephants haven't digested. I mean, elephants, they don't have very good digestive systems. So what you, you often find is other animals will eat out of the elephant dung in order to get nutrients. A lot of the times it is birds, just like this red-billed hornbill is doing. And the dung doesn't look too old. I mean, there is quite a lot of urine there also. So maybe these elephants are at a waterhole close by. We'll just have to go and see. Well, Chad, good luck. I have no doubt that you'll be able to get to every waterhole on the reserve before the end of the drive, definitely. I hope you find some elephants. I hope I find some elephants. We found a very nice... Uh, I think it was a very nice hyena. The sighting lasted... What, Panda? About maybe two and a half seconds. Yeah. And then the hyena was gone. It was going... 
at a high speed. He looked like a nervous young male. And we just couldn't keep up. And otherwise, it just continued to be fairly quiet on this end of the safari. But it is a lovely Sunday morning. It is just pleasant to be out here. We have continued to find nice birds. We had a beautiful sighting of some violet-backed starlings. Yes, and that's where we find ourselves. We're going to go back to the area from whence the hyena came, as opposed to trying to follow it. Maybe it was chased by another hyena or a lion. Yes, Catherine, I will not disagree with you. You say, and sue me the leopardess would be nice. Yes, she would. Yes, uh, any, uh, any leopard would be nice. The stage a mammal. We found a kudu. Unfortunately, Jarrett, the director, rejected our kudu on account of the fact that we could only see about a tenth of its back left leg. And you guys were looking at some warthogs, which I think, you know, is probably the correct call. It's starting to get quite beastly hot now. It's an upset squirrel here. The sun is so bright in our eyes that I think we'll just carry on. Janine, you say you love the praise names I have for Panda. Um, Janine, they're not praise names. They are names that he has given to himself. Pando, the name that your father, your parents gave you was? Tagudzwa Panda Musesani. And the glitz and the billions you gave yourself. Um, can you explain why? Trying to make a name. Change is as good as a holiday. Right. Tagudzwa Panda Musesani was the name he was given, and he's now called himself Billions and Glitz as well. I have no doubt that will increase over the next few years. moment with Panda. I was hoping to find some mistletoe here and talk about it, but naturally the Maruda trees are now driving past. There is no mistletoe. Panda, swing the camera to the left, if you don't mind, over there. Um, I'm going to pretend we haven't seen this thing. I'm just going to keep driving forward. All right. And now that we've conned it, I'm going to go back and see if we can't manage to get it on camera. There it is. It's a Steinbock. A little Steinbocken. Hello, Steinbocken. Oh, what a sighting. You know, just as we find the sighting of the day for this vehicle, Jared, the director, who was fast losing favour with me, has said we have to go back to Eric because Eric's lions are about to arrive at a pan. I mean, who wants to look at lions instead of a Stienbock bottom? Uh, this was pretty cool. I apologize, James. <clears throat> we were sitting here. We'd had a bit of a hunch that they would come here. And uh, our hunch was correct. 
No, there's not much water here, but I know that the last time they were here, there was water here. So, um, yeah, they <laughs> I mean, you guys can do some mud wallowing if you'd like. There's, there's no harm in that. No female. <laughs> the male's thinking about it. The females are having none of it. They're going straight past. Come on, get your paws muddy. Get in there. Okay, she's attempting a little bit of a, a drinky poo. And there's not really much to to get at there. Um, you know, the adult females, they walk straight past this. They weren't even stopping. Um, now you guys going to have to walk a fair distance to uh, get some water. Uh, I have a feeling this is it with them being on this side of the reserve because the next little patch of water is quite far from here and I don't think they're going to be coming back this way. I think they'll continue east. Oh, that lady is magnificent when she looks down on the... Oh, yes, please lie down there. Oh. I don't know. Between the, the mother, which is lying down there, and the, the son who's disappeared, I don't know who I love the most. I think my favorite would have to be that lady. She was the first lion that I ever managed to watch make a full kill. Most of the kills I've seen, I mean, I've seen the, only the end part when they've caught the animal or them chasing the animal, but never seen the, them catching the animal with her. She was sleeping in a bush, and uh, some blessed buck, three blessed buck, two adults, one juvenile, decided they're going to come down this slope very close to the bush that she was lying underneath. They didn't see her, they didn't smile her, even though the wind was going in their direction. And uh, she got up in the bush and uh, proceeded to chase the juvenile blessed buck right towards the car that I was sitting in. And uh, she probably caught this little place bug less than three meters away from me. I thought she was going to chase it into the car. It was absolutely amazing sighting, just like what we're having now. So I think, yes, between the, male, the young male, just because he's so curious, he's so cute. But uh, yeah, just the fact that he's very, very curious, I think, is a main reason why he's one of my favorites and don't get me wrong i love his dad his dad is oof, his dad is gorgeous but i think this boy is going to be i think he's going to be a bit bigger i think just sitting here kind of very disappointed and you know, trying to figure out what their next move is i mean they come all this way <laughs> for nothing to drink Barbara, we do. Technically, this would have been one that was man-made because um, there is a dam wall here. And if, if, it's, if it's not man-made, then they won't have a dam wall. It will just be a pan. So this would be a man-made pan. Um, and there are a couple of others, uh, especially in front of the lodges. In front of the lodges, there will be man-made pans. Um, where else? There is one on the open flats, uh, but it's a, a little bit smaller. It's right next to another big pan. Uh, and there's water in that one. There are a couple. There are a couple. But there are also a couple natural pans where water is just collected. Wow. It has been an absolutely phenomenal morning. <laughs> what? Autumn indeed. <laughs> this does look like a good place to sell water. I think we'd have quite a few buyers. Most of them <laughs> would be warthogs. <laughs> That is the elite comment. 
And I think the second comment of the day was Chad's comment. <laughs> oh, warthogs have turned up in Duma. I think so too. I told you that that warthog that these guys chased was running. He dropped the gear and he probably was still running after this. Uh, he took him and his family and they vacated this reserve. <laughs> quick, quick. Hello? I think everybody's sort of just lying around the area there. Ali Cat, we were just talking about this, myself and Morgan. We were looking at the big female. And uh, we had seen uh, our big male mating with her over the past few months. So we were kind of looking at the belly and trying to, you know, determine whether there's babies in there or is it just that she's got a big belly? Because uh, she naturally has a big belly, but... We just weren't too sure if it uh, if it was a food in there or if there was little little lions. So it's possible. And um, oh, we're gonna be definitely going into some exciting times at Amakala. Those two is resting on each other. Oh. Oh, actually, no, I don't think they're there. I'd look or that look behind, you know, kind of, oh, what's going on behind me? Oh, the people are moving again, all right. Darcy, these, the, these guys are absolutely amazing. They have such character, you know. Character and personality, I think. Especially these sub-adults. Same. I can't imagine how disappointed they are. But there's no water here. <laughs> oh my goodness.
All righty. Now, as you, everyone knows, our mission is to connect the world with nature. And a couple of you have already helped us with making a small donation, and our donations are much appreciated, as uh, they allow us to do a lot of, uh, get us a lot of contact, and get us some tech that we possibly couldn't have done without you. So if you would like to help, pop over to our website where you can click donate, and uh, once again, your donations would be very much appreciated as it will definitely help us improve and uh, maybe also get us, get us to different locations. This is absolutely gorgeous. I, it really is. We're very lucky. Very lucky indeed. These lions have cooperated with us today. Well, Eric has had an absolute corker of an afternoon, at least a morning. <laughs> It's not afternoon. It feels a bit like it's afternoon given the heat. And we have found the same giraffe we had yesterday. And I don't actually think we got him on screen. He refused to hang around. But he's hanging around now. I know the picture is not the best. This is not Panda's fault. This is because the sun has turned the sky to a brightness of white, the likes of which uh, Herod and his welding torch are probably creating in camp as we speak. It looks like somebody has lit an enormous magnesium flare. But what you can see is that he is a very dark giraffe, and I'm sure we've seen him many times before. I continue to be perplexed by the lack of giraffe here. And it's not just Juma, I mean it's all around this northern Sabi sand area because you will frequently hear guys on the radio saying, you know, I need to show my guests giraffe and, you know, desperately looking. Because they really are compellingly fascinating. I mean they're just sorely constructed. And we almost take them for granted sometimes, I feel. I mean, there's no other animal in the world that has anything like the same adaptations. He almost looks like he's slightly too tall for what he's trying to eat. Benji, no, giraffe don't come and investigate vehicles normally, but they do investigate people on foot. And it's actually quite fun. I mean, I wouldn't recommend you do it because it's, it's potentially quite dangerous. But if you go and sit on the ground close to, especially a herd of giraffe, they will frequently come closer and closer to you. And to the extent that I, I did it once, and I, they were probably maybe two meters from me looking at me on the ground I was lying on the ground and they put their heads down and I mean I looked up and there were just these muzzles these giraffe muzzles the problem then is that if if they get a fright or one of them gets upset I mean one kick from a giraffe one stomp will render the hum fragile human being uh, no longer part of this life They've got a vicious kick and they can kick with front and back feet. But you can, I mean, you can relatively safely do it. I, I'm not suggesting you try it, but you can sit in front of them. Liam, you say giraffes such great animals. Yes, they are. This one is enjoying a breakfast of zizifus bushes, which to us will taste like spinach. 
actually pretty good spinach substitute. Quite a few people don't like spinach at all, let alone spinach substitute, but if you do, this is a good option. Hmm. Winter prism, the giraffe doesn't have an extra long tail. It's just got a tail that is in superb nick. And a lot of giraffe, when they get to this age, have either lost the tail, you know, they've, uh, ticks get into the base somewhere between where that long hair starts and the sort of top of the tail, and they'll eat it off, basically. Eventually it comes off. And then a lot of them don't maintain that sort of horse hair, that's obviously giraffe hair, but you know what I mean, that horse hair tail at the end, the great fly swatter that they have. And I'm sure that it must make a difference over time to their health, because that fly swatter is extremely effective at getting rid of any kind of um, uh, parasite that might be on the body. Um, while I remember, we, my very first comment this morning came from somebody called Liverbird, and I am obviously an ignorant human being and didn't know what that meant. And the Liverbird, for those of you who didn't pick it up, uh, is in fact the, uh, the sort of legendary or fabled bird um, from Liverpool. And I, I mean, the diagram I saw of it made it look a bit like a cormorant, but I mean, I don't think that's what it is. Anyway, that's where it comes from. So to the very fine liver bird who got hold of us this morning, whose name I didn't understand, I do apologize. And apparently the liver bird is uh, on the badge of the Liverpool Football Club. So there we go. Nothing to do with this giraffe, but sort of relevant to the drive. Panda, what would you say the temperature is now? I would say maybe 32. Yeah, certainly in the in the sun it's starting to rival that at the um, at the centre of a neutron star. I think it's probably a similar sort of temperature. Yes, DJ Lex, you say what a tall, dark, and handsome giraffe. Indeed, he is. We might even call him Hugh Jackman, for example. <laughs> I think the heat is <laughs> the heat is getting to me. <laughs> right, we're going to say goodbye to Hugh Jackman and move along. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
But there have been some uh, incredible, or oh, there has been uh, great birding opportunities over the last little while here at Juma. So I'm, I'm glad everybody has been enjoying the birds and not just the, the bigger things. Nice to see the that warthog family also. And Jared was telling me that it's the longest warthog sighting that he has ever had. So that was very, very special to see. Often warthogs, you see them and as soon as you see them, you turn off the vehicle, gone, just like lightning. So I'm glad we were able to spend a little bit of time with that family of warthogs. Got a feeling that James is somewhere around this area. I don't know what's telling me that, but I feel like we're going to bump into him at some point in the near future. Looking at three warthogs over there, wondering if they're going to stand. Nope, not standing still for us at all. How rude. They're playing with each other, though. Um, no, so we left our lions now bumbling along. Um, yeah, where, where those lions were, it, was, it became a very, very tight, tight space. Um, lots of thicket around that pan, so it made it fairly difficult for others to see. And uh, we thought. We'd been with them for, I think it was about an hour and a half or so. And we'd thought we'd had our fair share. Let's maybe let some others come in. So some of the other guys with their guests have gone into that specific spot and uh, they are now taking visits of those lions that are lounging around and uh, staking out that pan. And we are now on a little bumble. Just seeing what's in the dune forest. We haven't really driven around here. We spend most of our time on the far western side with those lions for the majority of the morning. So we don't know what's been passing through here. So that's what we do. We're going to continue to go down this road. In the meantime, we're going to send you back up to James. This is a magnificent shot of a dusky indigo bird. Normally, this is a two pixel effort at long range. But this chap is close by. There's also, if you listen carefully, there's this hornbill behind us. It's quiet. There's a woodpecker it's here. It's gone, but just hang on a second, Panda. There's definitely a woodpecker knocking around on the same tree or the one next door to it. You're doing an exceptional job there. Oh, and the grey-headed sparrow has landed there. You can have a look at that one. There's also a long-billed crombeck going krt, krt, krt. It's all happening here. It's all happening. There's and a crested barbet. You see the crested barbet on the tree left of it? Go down, down, down. Right, 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 right. Right there. There. There you got him. Well done. Done, Crested Barbet. I was hoping that Woodpecker would show itself, but it hasn't as yet. I hear the Woodpecker. I think it's just below the tree line. Some blue wax bills. <laughs> I think Erica, let's ask Panda that. Panda, do any cam ops like busy bird sightings? I mean, I enjoy birds, but it's mm. a bit challenging. <laughs> 
He enjoys birds, but it's a bit challenging. There goes the barbet. And you can hear now a glorious... There, there, there it is. Um, the black-headed oriole sitting out in the open. Ooh, panda's on fire today. Look at that. Look at that color. Wow, that's pretty. Black-headed oriole. Not quite as pretty as its European or African golden cohort, but not bad. top of us and another one. You can get them panda. I'm being rude to panda now. There's no way he's going to get those. <laughs> All right well another very fine little birding segment I think there panda. Nice work. Let's carry on. Show everybody how you're sweating. Elizabeth, you say happy bird sounds and great camera work, Panda. Absolutely. Excellent job. Great effort. Oh, did we, we seem to have done a huge number of birds in the last 24 hours or so. <laughs> Not a, not a great deal of large mammals. But birds are many. I think that I've just been behind the behind the eight ball slightly with the mammals. Buffalo tracks, leopard yesterday, elephant this afternoon, at least this morning. But Chad has made it to another waterhole. I'd love to know which waterhole this is, Jared. Tell me when you get there. James wants to know what waterhole I'm at. I'm gonna be like an FBI agent and not say anything. If James wants to know, he'll maybe pop onto the app quickly and have a look, see where I am. But I do know that James is not far behind me because I did just recently pass the giraffe that James was with. I believe it's the same one. But we are at this uh, beautiful waterhole. We did have some impalas that came down to have a drink but they did wander off quite quickly and so they they should I mean a lot of the time when animals do come down towards the the water it is quite a vulnerable time for them I mean you can imagine oh, there's some impalas there just on the left hand side so I mean, you can imagine they're coming down towards a, a water hole when you've got your head down drinking, you're not really too aware of the surroundings around you. When your eyes are down towards the water, anything could come up behind you. I mean, the other day we had a, that nice herd of buffalo drinking at the water. And when they came down towards the water, they... Jared, you are 100% correct. Uh, as to where we are but don't tell uh, James please <laughs> um, but what I was saying is even the buffalo when they come down to the water they'll often stand away from the water for 10 minutes or so look around make sure there's nothing of danger and then they proceed to go down to drink I mean being as small as a impala is vulnerable to leopard lions 
cheetah, wild dogs. So they've got a lot more predators compared to a large Cape buffalo. But it is quite nice and peaceful just sitting here at this waterhole. I've been looking out for any interesting birds that I might see, but it seems like the birds are following James. Or James is maybe following the birds. Who knows? Some hornbills that are flying around. Did also hear a woodpecker. I can't seem to find it. Gavin impalas don't really defend themselves um, against predators. They do have those horns, but the thing is impala would rather try and just run away from a predator. So, I mean, if a leopard comes towards an impala, they're not going to stand their ground and try and defend themselves. Their defense mechanism is literally just to run away as quickly as possible. The something that would defend themselves um, is a buffalo. And we were just speaking about herds of buffalo now. And they've got those beautiful big horns on their, their heads in order to protect themselves. So, I mean, sometimes if like a buffalo bull gets surrounded by lions, you often find that they will try and be face on with the lions. So they will often then try and use their horns to deter the lions away from them. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. Daylight saving time for the US and Europe has arrived. The 10th of March will see the US shift an hour forward. And the 31st of March will see Europe and the UK also shift an hour forward. Stay connected to nature from wherever you are in the world. Go to our website to find out more. Don't miss a moment with Wild Earth. Well, we have taken one sort of last throw at the dice and come to Batelier Road, which is sort of central east. It's not a road that's very nice to drive, 
but I've had some decent sightings on it, but very few people actually drive it because it's not very nice to drive. And I'm hoping maybe, 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 this is where the great plethora of leopard cats is hiding out. Sadly, this has not played out just yet. Maybe we'll find some more interesting birds. I do think it's worth pointing out that since I was last here, which was about two weeks ago, it's astonishing how brown the grass has got. And I think we really are going to have a rough, dry season. And this bush is now going to quite quickly lose its thickness and make game viewing that much easier. Pando, if you could spot a leopard, that would be much appreciated. You know, I, I do appreciate that. Get it all. But a leopard, similar color, sort of yellowish and black. Doesn't have a black head. But that's similar color, um, but on four feet. Mm. Hopefully you will identify it, yes. Thank you. So many of you are saying, in fact, I, I'm not thankful for this. I'm sure Panda is. You say that, some of you say that he should add the name legend to his name. So we'd have Panda Tagudzwa Musesani Glitz Billions the Legend. I actually can't believe that some of you have suggested that because it's not going to happen and well, I, I'm going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to deal with it. So thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> We are going back down towards the valley of the Great Mulwati drainage line. And perchance we will we will find an elephant seeking shade down there. And perchance we will find nothing but whispering winds in the browning leaves of very late summer. Hello leopard lover, you want to know when I'll be back? I think my next stint is on the 4th of April it begins. So just after the Easter weekend, I will return full of chocolate and good cheer. Thank you for your concern leopard lover. Well, I don't know, maybe you're, you're sort of looking forward to that date or maybe um, it's a date you just like to be forewarned about. Ooh. We've got a citrus swallowtail here and it is feeding on the flower that never stops giving. Waltheria indica. It was a really lovely shot of the butterfly. I'm just going to reverse back. There it is. Panda, it's to the left. Um, there, can you see it? I'm just going to go a little bit forward. You've done so well with the birds that I thought I'd really give you a hard time and give you a butterfly. And once you get the butterfly correct, we'll move on to dragonflies. And then once you've got dragon, dragonflies, we'll get on to bats at night. Yeah. That's it, that's the one. You can see it flapping there, the citrus swallowtail. Well done. And it's just going to sample nectar at these Waltheria indica plants. Hmm. Terry, sometimes the people that discover the animals name them, and sometimes committees of 
deeply unimaginative people name animals, and sometimes people with great senses of humor name animals. What is that? There's a, there are, especially with insects, you know, they're finding insects and things all the time, and often you'll find the taxonomist has got a sense of humor and they'll name them something ridiculous like, um, you know, it'll be some sort of hymenopterid, a wasp, which will be belong to some obscure genus, and then they'll give it the specific name, Brad Potensis. and that sort of thing. You know, they'll name them after their favorite celebrities or whatever. That's a really nice shot there of our, of our citrus swallowtail. I haven't got the name wrong, have I? Citrus swallowtail, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'll show you what it's eating. Um, Panda, if you would like to bring the camera to bear on the flower. This is Waltheria indica. And it tends to flower slightly later than some of the other flowers, and you can actually see there the flowers. They're very indistinct, but there must be little, I suppose, tiny drops of moisture in them. Moisture and nectar. Because there are a few butterflies. There's an orange tip flying around here. The swallowtail and as the, most of the rest of the flowers are finished, you're going to have action around the Waltherias at this time of the year, when you can find a patch of them flowering. Panda, is this flower quite a lot easier to film than the butterfly? Uh, the flower is giving me a challenge. Eh? The flower is giving you a challenge. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you.
always beautiful just to enjoy a little bit of silence out here in the bush especially when you are at a, a waterhole it's nice to listen to the different bird calls lots of different birds that are, are calling and you often find that birds will come down towards the the water as it does start to heat up sometimes to give themselves a little bit of a bath sometimes to even look for some food that might be available to them on the outskirts of the waterhole I mean there's a lot of insects and things like that that will be on the outskirts of the water Theo you are 100% correct it's amazing how pristine impalas always look I mean, they're, they're always extremely well groomed. They're always sort of very proud of themselves. And a lot of people actually will sort of look past impalas. I mean, it is probably the most, it is the most abundant antelope out here that we do get to see. But uh, one of the reasons that they are always so well groomed is they will, they'll, so they will often, um, groom one another so they do allo grooming where I clean you you clean me so that's also why they're always so neatly and well presented but as we do leave twin dams now in a little bit I'm going to send you over to James who's got some wallowing animals well we've managed to refine the oxpecker we've been searching for all day long and um, thankfully it's on the back of something more substantial than anything else we found uh, that is a rhinoceros bull I think it's the same group of rhinoceri that young Chad found this morning the bull and the two ladies and as I was just repeating the uh, bull and the younger lady here were in flagrante delicto when we started the kids drive about 10 weeks ago he's now getting himself into the mud right, have a little sit down and good night <laughs> panda shall we see if we can't get a slightly better view the other side there let's I don't want to disturb him. They've got pretty relaxed, these guys, though, so we'll, we'll just see if we can't go around the side here without disturbing him. This actually might be the spot. And there's a big grass tuft in the way there. Yeah, I think we might get a nice view here, as long as I don't make too much noise going over this stump. Oh my goodness, his, his nose is in the water and he's blowing bubbles. Panda, say when it works for you. Is that good? A little bit of grass in the way, but we'll cope with it. Oh my goodness, look at the bubbles he's blowing. I wonder if I can get a picture of that. Jason, you say what an awesome way to end. It sure is. I mean, that's hilarious. Ridiculous. <laughs> Jason.
Jason, as you say, what an awesome way to end. Nathan, you say lovely completion. We started with rhino and ended with them, yes. And the same rhino too. <laughs> I do find that rather amusing. So let's appreciate the magnificent ox pecker sitting on the here, there. Oh, well, there's a great conflagration of ox -takers. Upset about something or other. Makes one feel quite tired just sitting here listening to the snoring rhino. So for those of you who are perhaps wondering how he's doing this, he's obviously in, he must be inhaling through his left nostril and exhaling probably through both. But he can't be inhaling surely through his right hand nostril. <laughs> Otherwise he'd drown. <laughs> and one wonders what the ladies are thinking. Are they kind of just tolerating him or do they think, what an idiot? What a nice um, shop there with the ox peckers. One of whom's just had a nice bath. agree with me that that's what he's doing he's inhaling through his left and out probably through both but I'm pretty sure that I am unable to inhale through one nostril and not the other at will I can if I really twist my face around like this and I can do it right panda say goodbye to everybody this will be the last time they see you today goodbye We'll finish off with our rhino there. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's going to be it from us. I will see you again on the 4th of April, if not before. And Cedric and Chad and Panda and then Paul. We'll see you this afternoon at 15.30. Until then, stay safe and happy. Bye-bye. <laughs>